Right, we are on our way to look at a job. This job has actually got a little bit of a story behind it. Um, I started it, well, we did the others on the development about three years ago, they're like bespoke one-off installations, and then COVID hit, was it, was it three or four years ago? I can't quite remember, it's been a while. Um, so we've repriced the job and we've got it. I'm just on my way now to have a look at it again because the underfloor heating to get well, I'm putting the underfloor heat down next week or at the end of this week, depending on how it goes because the screens are going down. But I just want to make sure we can get the unvented discharge and stuff out because that's in the centre of the house. We might have to run that under the floor. We just need to have a bit of a look at it. We put the solar thermal on the roof, well, a while ago, um, which is not great. You really should install and commission it within three months of installing it so i don't know if that's going to be any good we're just going to go and have a look basically i've got some soil pipes and some bits on the van i like to get my soils and stuff in first all the insulation's being dropped for the underfloor heating tomorrow so today's just going to be a little bit of a or what's left today is just going to be a little bit to see what we can get done um but yeah this this job's got well, I don't know if any of it's changed, you see now, but originally it was going to have two wood burners in there. There's an oil essay going in, um, there's an oil boiler going in, unfloor heating downstairs, a couple of bathrooms, ensuite, I think, cloak room. Um, so there's a reasonable bit to do anyway. Um, rad's upstairs. Um, so yeah, we'll go and have a look. And as I say, what I want to try and do, if anything needs to get done under the floor, um, we'll get that done first because I think they're dropping the insulation down tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we'll go and have a look. Welcome to this job. Um, bit dark in here isn't it but it'll be all right um cylinder and everything's going in there as i say we're gonna to have to get a discharge out it's a solar cylinder i've already been the first fix the solar panels on the roof not that you'll be able to see my pipes now because all the cylinders have been boarded but yeah we've got to get um we'll have to get a flow return from the boiler manifold's going in there for the underfloor heating cylinders going in there so that's all fairly straightforward and then we'll have the zone valves up for the upstairs radiator circuit that's all fairly self-explanatory. Just getting my head around. I like to just have a walk around the job. This is, I think this is downstairs cloakroom. I will get the drawings out. I haven't actually got any drawings for it. This is kitchen and dining. Oh no, that's downstairs cloakroom. That must be under the room, I don't know. Um, boiler and everything's going in here. It shows the oil boiler going in that corner. Cold main coming up, sink in the middle. Um, so we need a hot down here as well. Blow in terms, we'll probably have to chop in that wall up there and across, get through there and across into that cylinder cupboard, so that's not too bad. All under floor eating in here, so we only got hot, cold and that to get in here. We've got soil pipe there for the first floor, which we'll have to put a tee up there, short bar socket or something and run across. We'll work out where that's all going up there. That one there, I imagine for the kitchen sink drain, so we need a hot and cold down there. That's fairly straightforward. I just like to walk around and plan everything out in my head, um, just so you can sort of see where stuff's going. Um, wood burner in there. I don't think we've got any hot and colds in here. Another wood burner in there. Again, all on floor heating in here, which that's all fairly straightforward. And then we'll have a look upstairs. That's bathroom or en suite one, which that's all pipes coming up in the corner there. On my drawing, it shows toilet, basin, bath, but that might have changed now. And then we've pretty much got a mirror image in here. So there's another soil pipe in that corner, toilet, basin, bath. One of these will have to be vented right through. We'll have to have a look on the drawing. One of them will just go on the sub stack. And then in here, we've just got probably a radiator under the window, radiator under the window, and then just probably a couple of radiators in here and then towel rails in the bathroom. But again, I will confer it on the drawing. So it's not that much, as you see, we've got this was all that was left over from the other jobs uh, when we did the other plots. I mean, this will be all right still, um, I'd imagine. So we've just got some underfloor eating. I mean, we won't probably use that, but the speed bit will probably be fine. I'll get some new. Uh, we've got some underfloor heating stuff, but all the solar thermal control should be here somewhere. And that's part of the solar thermal. <laughs> They're my dice from my rigid predator. God knows what well area. Uh, that's the expansion vessel for the um, solar thermal. So yeah, I bet all the kit is here for it. We'll have a look. We've got some soil pipe fit in there as well. Get some bobs. You know you get junk left over at the end of jobs. Because we did three other properties there. And this was the last one, so you sort of move stuff across. But anyway, furlough. Not furlough, COVID and everything kind of, well, I don't know what happened really, um, but we're back now anyway. Um, so yeah, what I'll probably do is start on some soils. On oh, the unvented discharge, we'll have to have a look at, because I say that's on the middle ground floor. But yeah, we'll um, 
start to start to get some soils in. I've got a meeting with the client and the builder in a bit anyway, so we're going to discuss bathroom layouts and stuff. Um, so I don't want to do anything that I have to sort of undo. There's a story behind that copper pipe. I'll tell you it quickly. When I it was over COVID, basically we did a hospital. We had to put 21 intensive intensive care units, and when the furlough Boris Johnson came out, I think it was on the Tuesday. Um, all the plumbers walked off and there was only me, there was an apprentice and there was another lad. But these other plumbers, they left all this copper. And what they'd done, because they couldn't get three metres in the van, they'd literally angle grinded it through. And there was there was, there was was stacks of copper. Um, they literally just like cut it and that's where all that came from. So I think I did <laughs> some of the other plots because you don't use a lot of copper on these jobs. It's just a cylinder room and stuff like that. They were literally just... There was a full room full of copper and they just left it. They, they're like, you're not coming back for your copper? And like, nah, just chuck it. So that's where all that copper came from. That's why it got left over on jobs. And I was using it for ages, all this 22 mil copper pipe and 15 mil that was just cutting off with an angle grinder. And it was just chucked in the vans because they couldn't get it to site. So that's how they were delivering it. So yeah, that's where all that copper came from. Crazy, crazy wastage from them other plumbers. But literally they worked out they were better to be sat at home on furlough than they were to be coming in and doing the job. Um, so yeah, me and this other lad, we'd only been on it a day. I think we started on the Monday and he, he announced the furlough on the Tuesday night and they all walked off. I think there was six or seven of us or eight of us. And as I say, there was only me and Apprentice and another lad. And we did them 21 rooms in three weeks, three or four weeks. We worked seven days a week and long days. But we put all the showers in, they were all pump gullies, um, basins. It was basin in each bedroom, basin and thing, toilet. Um, yeah, it was a good job, and that kept me going through the first part of furlough, and then I finished the other plot off because it was empty, um, and then I picked up a load of other work as well, so we got really lucky during lockdown. But yeah, um, that's where that copper came from. Unvented discharge, cylinders on the other side of that. What we'll do is I'll get all the insulation put down, but we'll notch it into the top of the insulation and run straight out the back of the house. So we'll run a 28 mil. It's going to be straight anyway. That's less than three metres, but I'll upsize it to 28 mil. Then we'll have a couple of... Bends. I could even bring my bender if I wanted, but it's the big tripod one. We'll bring it out the ground and then up for the cylinder while just out the floor. And that gets that dealt with. We'll put a guard on the outside. That looks like one of my bushes that it's well used. I always start with my drains on these jobs, uh, especially when you first trade in because it's easier to bend a, uh, a plastic, you know, plastic heating pipe or a plastic water pipe rather than a four inch, four inch drain. It's not full of concrete either, which is a good start. It's not that it should be, but I'll just get my hand down them. And all the rest bend on the bottom. We are going to put a short bar socket up there above the ceiling height because that will pick up the basin and the bath or the shower, whichever they're having in here. Um, so I I run all my waste an inch and a half, unless it's a long one on the showers, in which case I run two inch. Um, but all I'm going to do is literally just set my first length up and then we'll end up having to cut through there, set the T up. Because I don't want to do too much of these until we've got the actual proper bathroom layout. But there's no way you get a soil across there anyway, so I'm guessing the toilet... Well, on, the, on my drawing, it shows toilet and basin. In which case, we'll run the basin one through there and then the bath one will come out here above my head and across to about there for the bath. Um, so that's what we're going to run with for a start. Somebody always asks me what I think of internal soil stacks. I mean, they look a lot better than having the stack pipes run up the outside. It probably is easier for me, but it's just if you have a block. To be fair, the, the others we've done on this estate, have, none of them, well, I've never been back to them. And we put access points just on the outside. So here, if you did, you can, you have got clear access to the drain, if that makes sense. But with, with having the long radius red spend on the bottom, they tend, they tend not to block up. I'm not saying they'll never ever block up, but they tend not to. The only thing when you box everything in and everything's hidden, you can never get to it, well, not easily after. Wrap a little bit of um, that hair felt lag in around my clips. It just stops it squeaking. Not that I've ever really had a massive problem, but I just think it, it won't do any harm. That bit extender was about two quid off Amazon. I've had it years. It came in a set of three, like a short one and a medium one as well. Um, but it's brilliant for just getting down the right hand side of your soil pipes when you're in a corner. And you can put spade bits in it as well and just blast through your joints. It's just, yeah, it's just one of those things you don't realise you need until you need it. 
it's brilliant. So I've been around and dropped all my saw pipes in up to first floor height. That's as far as I'm going to take them until I get the proper layout. I'm just link, thinking about my hot, cold and flare return coming from this point across the airing cupboard now. I've picked up a load of pan towel out which we can run across, get all our clips on and then just literally lift the pipes up if that makes sense. But what we need down here is a hot and cold into the cloakroom, a hot and cold, but I've already got a cold down there and a flare return up there. We'll have to chase them in the wall for the boiler. Hot and cold down there, but I'm thinking I might run a balanced cold off the multi block for my bathrooms. I'm not too worried about um, the kitchen sink and that being off a balanced cold. Well, it's not going to be anyway on that one because I'm not putting it all the way back. Um, but showers and baths are a bit more sensitive if, if to even pressure. So I might just run a cold off my multi block from the cylinder back to these two bathrooms. I think it. It sometimes pays to do it that way, I find, rather than running the cold across. Because if we've got four bar coming in and only three bar, you can have slightly un uneven pressures on your showers and stuff, which I don't think it would be a massive issue, but I think it just for the sake of a little bit of an extra pipe, I'll just run it back to there. So, yeah, we just need to get all them pipes sort of put in. And then, as I say, the, cl uh, the client will be here in a bit anyway, but at least I've made a bit of a start. Um today and look, that's all i really wanted to do that's the only reason why i'm here is because the clients come in and then the builder's supposed to be able to discuss the underfloor and stuff and i know he wants to get them screeds dropped so i'll as soon as i know exactly what's going on with that i'll get that ordered that'll probably be here tomorrow and we can start getting all that done um but yeah that's sort of my day or my morning it's just how we're going to get because we've got solar thermal to get through here as well i'm probably just going to bring everything where the wall's going upstairs the solar thermal well might have to, i'll have to have a think about it but i'm going to get everything bought my hot cold flow and turn into this corner up here and then a balanced cold 22 back down there so we need to be running in this joist here across and then we'll loop oh, pulling over myself we'll loop them in there down there that's what i'm going to crack on with now I'll get a load of bits of wood cut Get the holes drilled and we'll get a load of clip screws on here. And it's just a case of laying in part of the battery. Yeah, the so I generally use Pantol lat to go across the joist and then these hanger clips are good because you can just screw straight into the side of them. So if you're doing a run that way, because sometimes you struggle to get on top, if that makes sense, with the web. But they didn't have any 22mm ones in them, so I need to get some. But in theory, you can just screw them straight on your, your joist and then you just lay your pipe straight in. They just make life a little bit easier. So I don't, I don't exactly know what they call them, hanger clips or whatever, but yeah, they do make a bit life a bit easier. That's going to want to be there. So to the centre of our pipe from the top, about 135. So I'll get four 28mm hole sleeve through there and um, ready for that pipe work to get back into the airing cupboard. We'll space my parts so we can lag them. So we'll go, we've got the whole, or this whole joist we've got. Um, so we'll go 50, 60 mil apart and just blast a load of holes through there. And oh, we'll have to watch that chimney. We might go in the next one. <laughs> That'll do me. What I'm going to do is run two in there, flow and turn, and then two in that one. It keeps all my heating and then I'm a cold water away from each other as well. I know we're going to lag it anyway, but it just means I can keep them straight to miss that chimney as well. It's an extra few bits of wood, but it's not the end of the world. That's two 28mm holes uh, drilled through there. This job, the specification is for plastic. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I would use copper all day, but you can't go changing the spec on jobs. You've just got to follow it. Um, I know, I understand why they do it. It's, it's quicker. I don't think it's particularly cheaper now, to be honest with you, the price of plastic fittings and stuff. But yeah, we just do as we're told on these jobs. Um, no, you, nothing you can do. It doesn't give you a lot of job satisfaction at the end of the day. This would look sick in copper. I'd get that all clipped up nice and straight into my boiler. Lovely. I mean, that bit at the bo bottom near the boiler is going to have to be copper anyway and all in the cylinder room. So it's only everything that's hidden is plastic, I should have said. Um, but yeah, we'll just do as we're told. Um, and that's all you can ever do. Never spotted that one, did we? Two different ceiling heights. We don't might have any drilled a, a pilot hole through. That would be boarded over, but I don't know if I can get it in that joist. We might have to come through at an angle, and then we might have to put some air taps up here off the boiler. I don't know if they're having a, a loft hatch in here. Well, they're going to have to, because we're going to have to put some air taps, because it's just going to airlock at the top. Thank you. 
He's a bit tight that drill bit, but he does get out. Sometimes you have to wiggle it. That one's all right, you see. If I wiggle it a bit more, they're going a bit easier. Yeah, the other thing, the plastic pipe, is you got to clip it a lot more as well. So I think it sometimes takes, well, not longer. But with copper, I'd probably get away with three sets of clip along there. Plastic, I'm probably going to have to have five. Bags from the top, you can put all your rubbish in there. Then, you get a ready made bin. We'll clip them along there and probably put some extra bits of wood in, and that's. Well, our floor or return, we just got to get the other one dragged in. Here's one for you then. I'll tell you how much we was paying for materials over lockdown. I've just priced the unfloor heating up again now for this job, and it's come out £900 cheaper than when we priced it first time. And that was the same company again pricing it, and I've had a different company. They're both winning about 40 quid of each other. So, yeah, 900 quid more would have been paying if we'd put this unfloor heating down over COVID than what we are now. That's how much materials went up. It was crazy prices. Um, but yeah, you always think materials have gone up, well some stuff has, but that's actually come down quite a bit. I had it on a few jobs where I priced cylinders and stuff, and the actual cost of the materials had come down when I had them repriced. Um, but yeah, 900 quid, that is a big saving. That's the first bit done. That's them in as straight as I can get them. We've just basically it's a repeat, repeat process now with the hot and colds and the ballots are getting across here. That one we've just got to take a, a hot and a balance across to that bathroom that's above there. So yeah, it's all fairly straightforward. And then the heating, as I say, I'll, when I want to get the radiator drawing, I'll have a proper look at it. But again, we'll just loop them in. Not too bad. I mean, I'm not very quick at these jobs, but there's a couple of days work on getting most of my pipes in and all my soils. And then there's, if I'm doing all the insulation, there's a day and a bit on the insulation and a day and a bit on the underfloor. So it's about a week's work to get it first fixed for me in here. As I say, some people will probably do that in two days. I ain't that quick and I'm not killing myself on these sort of jobs. I've seen people online say they can do it in two days or a day or whatever. I can't. Um, yeah, I'm not that quick. But yeah, we'll, we'll try and do a neat job. Try and keep everything straight. Try and keep everything tidy. That's all you can ever do. They're my hot and cold from my kitchen sink. They'll be chopped in in copper in that corner, but I'll just get some speed fits across. It's just it's just a lot quicker with them joist hanging clips because you're not trying to get nail on on top of the joist or anything like that. So yeah, screw straight in. I've clipped every one to keep them nice and supported. Got my balance in. I've run out of 22 pipe now, um, but it's just going to be a 15 hot through into there, 22 cold, and then a 22 across the bath um, on there. And then I've just got that bathroom there to get in, and that's all the hot and colds in then. Um, these are just looped up in here for the time being, and then I've got I've only got about five or six pads to pick up upstairs anyway, it's not too bad. So I'll probably get them worked in as well, or work out where they're going, uh, and then we can get all the floor down. Then it's all changed now. Um, I told you them saws would be banging, and that's why I didn't finish them off. Toilets are going there, so I've had a word with the builder, and he's going to try and well, we're going to see what we can do with that joist because I can't even take it through into the other one because I can't vent it. So yeah, we'll sort it, we'll get over it. But basically we've got a toilet there, bath there, which is not an issue. And basins along there and then shower tray and toilet on the back wall and the other one. We can sort it. And then, good job I didn't put these in either because the boiler's now going in this corner in a cupboard with the fuse board above. But that makes my life easier if anything. So I'll just bring a flow and turn down there and we'll clip them after we can put the filter and everything down there in the cupboard. Rather than have it over there, and then hot and colds will just chop in. We can sort it. That's why you need to have a pro proper talk with the client, exact, find out exactly what they want. They've had the bathroom designed, I know what they want. I've just got to try and achieve it with the soils, but we can sort it. Hopefully it's not too dark now, I forgot to film an outro earlier. I've met the client, they're really nice. All the lads who are doing the project are really nice as well. I've worked with them for years. You could leave your tools in there, nobody would touch them. It's just nice to know everybody wants to do a good job and you can trust everybody on the site. It just it does make a big difference. Um, so yeah, we know exactly what we're doing on that job now. We've discussed all the bathrooms. There's one or two things that have moved from the drawing, but you always get that and that's why you need to sit down and have a, have a chat basically, find out exactly what people want and we can always achieve exactly what the one 
project. The next bit of the project is going to be the underfloor heating. Um, I'm really looking forward to this job. As I say, I, I really like all the people who are working on it. It's two minutes from my house as well. And if we get a bit of spare time at the end of the day, we can drop back on it. So it takes a lot of the pressure off me. Um, I know we need to get the underfloor heating down fairly sharpish because the screeds are booked. But after that, we can sort of plod on uh, our heart's content, really. Um, there's no massive rush with the project um, well so far obviously there always comes a point when there's a rush but um, you know what I mean it's a nice job um, so yeah hopefully there was enough plumbing content in this video thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you all next week